Welcome to formatting your research paper in open office. First I'm going to tell you a couple tips. Uh, it's really easiest to write your draft first and then add all the formatting later. So as you can see here I have my statement of purpose, my hypothesis, my research, my materials, my procedure, observations, conclusions, bibliography, acknowledgments. You don't have to do it that way, it just makes it a little easier. Also, um, I'm going to go back up to the top. When I do mine, I like to put it in screen width so I can see it really well, but if you would like to do that, if you go into view and then go down to zoom, and then you can pick fit width and height, and if you click OK, you can see how it changes it. I like mine to be on screen width, fit width, and I say OK. The other thing that I like to do is I like to see my non-printing characters sometimes, like my paragraph marks, my page break spaces. If you would like to do that, this is how you need to do it, but you don't have to. Um, there's a couple ways. One, you just go up to that paragraph mark, and if you hover it over, you can see it says non-printing characters. Click it, and uh, for some reason it went to the bottom. I'm going to go back up to the top. There you can see paragraph mark those little dots in between right there, that means you hit the space bar. If I was going to hit a tab key, you can see it shows up as an arrow like that. Um, another way to do that is if you go into the view menu and then go down to non-printing characters. It, you can turn them on and off that way. So. All right, I'm going to start mine with no formatting, like I said, and I have my rough draft. I don't have any page breaks or anything. I did write TOC for Table of Contents holder, so I know where I want my Table of Contents to go later. All right, Amanda said she wanted the font to be Times New Roman, which it probably defaulted as, and 12 point, which it also probably defaults as. If you can see up here in the font, name box it says times New Roman and in the font size box it says 12. However if yours does not do that what you can do is click and highlight everything and then go into your box type in times usually it'll pull up a menu click times New Roman and in this box go down and click 12. So I didn't have that already I do now. Amanda also wants it black, so I can go over here to the font color box, click the drop box, and click black. All right, um, she also said she wanted it double spaced. So since we have it all highlighted, there's a couple ways to do that. You can just, once it's highlighted, you can right click. It'll bring down a menu, and you can go down to line spacing, and then go over and down to double. Um, I'm going to do edit, undo, and show you another way to do that. Once it's all highlighted, again, I'm just scrolling to the top. You can go into format, paragraph, and then make sure indents and spacing is highlighted. Go down to line spacing and pick double. Um, the other thing you can do, I'm just going to hit cancel, is if you go into uh, format. Oh, never mind. That's alignment. That's that's just what your choices are. So I am going to go into paragraph and line spacing double, and I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to go back to the top. I think it kept doing it. I haven't clicked. At, I was clicked at the bottom. I'm going to click at the top. It'll stay there. So Amanda said she wanted the title to be. Uh, 16 point, so I'm going to highlight it, go up to my font size, click 16. She also said she wanted it centered, so um, although the title page is not supposed to be double spaced, this part, so I'm just going to highlight it, right click, pick line spacing, single. All right, she did say she wanted it to be centered. So there's a couple ways to do that. First, I'm going to highlight what I want. One, I can just click on the box, go to Alignment, and pick Centered, and hit Edit Undo. I can also, it has to be highlighted, I can go to Format, 
and I'll go down to alignment and pick centered or I can go format go to paragraph pick alignment and pick center so any of those they all do the same thing so you just pick what you like better um, we're gonna leave it at the top right now and we'll move it to the bottom of the page after we add our page numbers later right now we're gonna talk about formatting your headings by doing it the way I'm gonna tell you right now as opposed to just changing the size you're going to be telling the table of contents program that we're gonna add later to use the heading for its table of contents that way you won't have to type it in later so you're gonna scroll down your page to your first heading which is statement of purpose I'm gonna highlight it and then I just click up here into the apply the style box hit the drop menu and pick heading one it changes it to Arial, as you can see here, and 16 point. We want 16 point, but we want Times New Roman. So I'm going to hit the dot, drop arrow and click Times New Roman. If it doesn't say that, hit the, time, the drop arrow and type in Times New Roman. All right. Uh, next heading would be Hypothesis. I can click and drag or if it's just one word I can double click I'm going to go up to my box pick heading 1 I'm going to change it to Times New Roman go down to my research double click style box heading 1 Times New Roman scroll down lots of research double click materials make it a heading 1 make sure it's Times New Roman now down to procedure, double click, make it a heading one, times new Roman, and so on. Observations and results. And I'm just gonna go off screen for a second, finish those up. All right, as you can see, I have changed those all. I'm gonna scroll back up to where I have my table of contents holder. I'm gonna click right underneath it and remember we're doing this automatically so I don't have to type in the headings I don't have to type any page numbers but um, what I need to do is go into insert in the menu bar go down to indexes and tables now over to indexes and tables click make sure that the type is table of contents It's for the entire document and I'm going to click OK and there is our table of contents that easy. Um, we don't need the placeholder anymore so I'm just going to highlight that and delete it. Now we need to put in our page breaks. To do that just click in front of your header, go up into insert in the menu bar, manual break, make sure page break is chosen and click OK. I'm going to scroll down to my next section, insert, manual break, page break, OK. Next section in insert manual break page break okay I am going to update these update those off screen I'll be right back all right as you can see materials is on its own page procedure observation conclusion bibliography acknowledgements so now I am going to scroll back up to my table of contents sorry and now to update it uh, it's pretty easy just right click in your table of contents click update index and table and there you go all the page numbers as you can see here have been updated it's that easy right now what you'll probably want to do also I'm gonna scroll down to my materials and procedures because your materials list you'll probably want it as a bulleted list to do that you just need to highlight it and then you can do a couple ways. You can go up here and just click on bullets. Um, I can click on it to turn it off too. If you want to have your bullets look a certain way, if you go into format and then choose bullets and numbering, I can choose the picture of the bullets. So I'm going to say I want these ones and I'm going to say OK. And now you can see that it's different. I have an extra in here so I'm just going to click in front of it and hit delete. 
All right, I'm going to scroll down to my procedures. It's hard to read because there's no numbers. I'm going to highlight what I want. If you don't get the whole end of the line, that's okay. You don't need to. See, I'll show you. I'll leave it blank. I'm going to go up to numbers, click on numbering an icon, and there they go. If you want your numbers to do, look different, you can go into format, bullets, and numbering. Click on numbering type, and you can have this uh, with the parenthesis after it or the periods or whatever. So I'm leaving it as it is, so I'm going to hit cancel. All right, the last thing that I'm going to do is talk about inserting a picture. Uh, so I think just up here by my materials, um, for animal skull, I have a picture of that, so I'm going to insert it. So I'm going to click insert. I'm going to click down here to picture. I'm going to get it from a file. And I'm going to, it's in Dropbox, and I'm going to pause. All right, I have my file of my skulls open. I'm going to click the picture of the cleaned skull. I'll wait for it to put that in. And now I will want to fix it. Remember, if you want it to hold its formatting, you need to hold down the shift key, grab the little arrows, and then resize it so it'll hold it. Um, now to add a caption, I right click, go down to caption. This is a, uh, my cap box is on, a link skull. And I'm gonna say okay. So now you can see it says it there. I'm gonna double click to fix the alignment. So I can click on wrap. I want it to be optimal. However, I do want it um, to have a little space around it on the top and the bottom and the right and the left side. And I'm going to say OK. I'm going to drag it to the side because I want it over there. So now I have my animal skull. If I want to move it around, if I click, if I click it with the green dots just around the picture, you see what's going to happen. I will move only the picture, not my caption. So I'm going to hit Edit, Undo. This time I'm going to click on the outside box that also is around my caption. Now if I move it, it moves the caption as well. All right, that's all there is to it. We covered a lot today. Um, I hope this helps you in your research paper. Oh, the last thing. Our table of contents needs to be on its own page. So I'm going to hit in front of that insert. I can't do it right there. See how it's grayed out? So what I'm going to do is click at the bottom of here and say insert manual break, page break. Now what I want to do is I can hit return. Not a very fancy way to do this, but to get this at the bottom of the page. And I'm going to have this move this down just a couple. All right. Oh, and that moved that, so I'm going to go back up. I forgot the last thing I need to add is the page numbers. And to do that, I need to first insert a header. So I insert, go down to header, say default. Now that I'm in here and I'm going to insert and I go to fields, sorry, click page number. It's right here on the right. All I need to do is click over here to make it on, or it's on the left, to make it on the right like Amanda wants it. You could also do format, alignment, write or format paragraph right. But um, there it is. They're now on all the pages, as you can see. However, the problem is it's also on the first page. So when you print this out, you will just have to white out the one on the first page. But aside from that, there it is. I hope you've learned something and ask me any questions in class if you have some. All right. Thank you.